Hello Rocket fans and welcome to an update on the test that we did a while back in Odense uh, Skydiving Center where we tested three different parachutes, one being the one we got from Valkyrie Recovery Systems, the other one being the, uh, I don't know what to call it anymore, the um, Flying Spaghetti Monster and in the end we tested the Onion, also called the Supersonic X design. For starters, the parachute that we got from the Valkyrie Systems, which is a wing sail design, which is basically the design to use when you're talking recovery of a uh, manned uh, uh, space capsule, that when you look at the performance from that itself was fantastic. We did see a lot of jellyfishing, you could call it. It's where it uh, inflates and deflates a little bit all the time. You see the oscillations of the um, of the main parachute and that is quite normal when uh, when we're talking a, a quite light load which uh, Martin after all represents when you see, think about the parachute being designed for 350 kilos and Martin with his gear is quite less than that. Um, so the jellyfishing was quite normal. What we unfortunately did also see uh, was that uh, in the opening sequence where the intent was to have two steps before fully opening up. Uh, we only saw it opening up a little bit and then up to full opening. The reason for that is unfortunately that uh, when packing the parachute I wasn't doing that good enough. So when um, when we pack the um, the uh, reefing devices, the uh, reefing timers or cutters, whatever you would call it, uh, you have to put them into the deployment bag in a very uh, specific way. You have to put them in so that the um, top of them with the, um, with the switch is vertical. Um, and due to me not doing that perfectly when I look back at how I did it, uh, we got a problem because the switch that is being pulled out from the device that was um, at an angle to uh, to where it's being pulled from, meaning uh, you have to pull the switch out this way. And uh, when we pulled out the um, the device from the from the deployment bag, it was pulled this way instead. So what happened was basically that the switch um, disconnected the electronics within the uh, the box, so that device didn't work at all. And that was the one that should take the first stage of uh, the debriefing sequence. After that, uh, the other box was positioned correctly in the deployment bag, or at least more correctly. So uh, we did see after uh, the right amount of seconds that the, um, that the main parachute uh, inflated fully in the end because the second box worked as it was supposed to. So um, it was a mixed pleasure, I would say, to, to, to see that test because in the end we got to see the uh, Valkyrie uh, fully inflated, uh, descending very slowly, um, behaving exactly as expected on, on that point of time. Um, but the uh, reefing timer turned out to, uh, to have a design flaw that, uh, interestingly enough, about... 12 days before the test, we had a discussion in the workshop about exactly that uh, situation showing up um, and what to do about it. So we, uh, we, we had it on our radar that a, uh, a thing like that could happen. And um, that means that we, we already have some ideas of how to change the design in the future. If you want to see any of this hardware coming together in person, test some flown rockets, or try our space capsules out for size, come visit us. We run public tours every weekend, so just check our website for availability and book your visit. We really hope to see more of you here. Back to our enemy number one within the parachute department. We uh, do have our problems with the flying spaghetti monster, and we still have that. Um, now we see exactly the same problem that it doesn't inflate fully. Um, for this final version 4, um, we had uh, extended the uh, risers, we had closed up the apex hole a little bit by 10-15%, 
and we have uh, we had added uh, some mosquito net as well to the uh, apex um, to catch just a little bit of air besides the way we uh, closed it up. So a lot of things uh, done as a, a theory book would, would say that you should do. Um, and then we see a behavior even worse than the previous tests. So uh, it seems that the more we are trying to fix the um, drug, the worse it behaves, basically. So now I'm, um, I'm fed up with it, to be honest. I think, uh, I think for now we're going to discard it. And then um, we're looking into the third test, which was the onion, or more correctly called the supersonic X. Um, that has, at any given time, at any test we've given it, behaved exactly as expected, even from the very first test where we could predict the uh, descent speed at a, at a very good um, level. So, that one seems to work for us. And uh, we have had some of the grown-ups uh, behind the lines tell us that it'll work, don't worry. So, um, so I think for now I'm, um, I'm, I want to go in that direction as well. And the good thing about that is that we, uh, at the same time, or during the August test of the uh, parachutes, we've been uh, in contact with a uh, British company, uh, Heathcote Fabrics, uh, who have so kindly asked us if we didn't want to test some of their Kevlar. And uh, the timing of that discussion is perfect because uh, that means that we can test the onion with the right fabric now, not only the, uh, the nylon that we have been using so far, but we can actually make a, uh, a Kevlar version now uh, and, and test that to see how, uh, how well that would work for us. And also uh, Heathcote uh, has, um, yeah, they, they donated uh, enough fabric to us, enough Kevlar, so that we can also make a, uh, a version of the balut in Kevlar as well, meaning that that will also once again be made in, in the final uh, material that we have to use uh, once we uh, actually go to space. So just to show you, I've, I've actually got a sample here from Heathcote. Uh, so this is what, we, what they've do, provided me so far. And um, it looks uh, to be uh, quite good, actually. And uh, I'm, I'm sure, at least for the, uh, for the uh, onion, that it will work perfectly. And then uh, it's going to be interesting to see if, how well it will work for the, for the balut as well. So I'm uh, keeping my fingers crossed that uh, the uh, work ahead will be uh, fruitful. So good times for that. Um, also, since we are, uh, for now at least, departing the uh, ribbon, the um, flying spaghetti monster, and I don't know, sh shutting up that mouth uh, somehow, or whatever you would call it, uh, we are looking into, is there another way we can help the booster take off the top of the speed during its descent? Um, and one way to do that is to look in the direction of a test that uh, NASA did back in 2014. Uh, it's called the LDSD. And that is basically that uh, you take the um, donut part of our balut and add that only, only that part to the outside top of the, of the booster. And then you can, in essence, give, give the booster a uh, bigger um, area, surface area projected to the wind at a, a very low cost of mass. And that will at the same time make sure that the booster is oriented the right way. Um, so we have more or less the core of the design already since we have the ring from the, uh, from the balloon. And then we're just going to have to modify that for the size of the booster. And lo and behold, Heathcote Fabrics have promised me that uh, if we need some Kevlar for, for that as well, go ahead and ask. So fun times ahead uh, in the important end of the uh, rugged. And I know that uh, there is also a lot of important stuff going on with the, uh, with the engine department, which they will uh, tell about in their own videos, of course. So um, good times ahead. We are working hard towards 
getting a pers person to space. So uh, trust us, we are on the right path, even though you may think that it is going quite slow right now. Uh, stuff is being done uh, all the time in, in the workshop and here in, in my living room as well. So don't worry, we are on, on the right track. The reason we're getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you enjoy watching these insider videos on building a space program and you would like to become an even bigger part of it, you can help us out by going over to our website www.copsum.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation. We all do this for free in our spare time, so you'd be surprised how much every little bit helps. And thank you if you feel like what we do and share is interesting.